very warm welcome to all the delegates and participants of this second Satyam Yoga Conclave. The Satyam Yoga Conclave is a part of various yogic, spiritual, socio spiritual, and welfare activities, which Satyam, Satyam Sumiran Yoga Research Foundation has undertaken as a dedication to our inspirer, Swami Satyananda Saraswati. And this year, all these activities are a part of the Satyam Shatabdi Yoga Yag. This is the year of the birth centenary of Swami Satyananda Saraswati. And Swami Satyananda Saraswati has been a pioneer in the movement of yoga. Since the 1960s, he has brought out a lot of activity in yoga. He has given a very firm scientific outlook to yoga. But he did not rest at that. He went further and he has given yoga a next dimension. And this year, we at Satyam Sumiran Yoga Research Foundation, we have decided to dedicate it to him. And I personally feel that this is the year of the breakthrough. This is not just an ordinary year. This is an occasion where we can connect to that inner source within ourselves and make that breakthrough in our life. And all the activities which are undertaken by SSYRF are undertaken with this spirit. A spirit by which we can bring about a change in our life, bring about self-improvement. And it is with this dedication that let us begin the second Satyam Yoga Conclave. I will request all of you to sit quietly for a few moments. Gently close your eyes. Become aware of the whole body from the top of your head to your toes. Awareness of your head, neck, shoulders, arms, chest, upper back, abdomen, lower back, hips, legs, the whole body. Shift your awareness to your breath. Normal spontaneous breathing. Coupled with awareness, I am breathing in and I am breathing out and I am aware, I know I am breathing in, I am aware, I know I am breathing out. Let this be the form of your awareness for a few moments. Shift your awareness to your eyebrow center, Guru Mantya, and visualize the form of a brightly burning little flame at this point. And maintaining your awareness on this image, on this experience, we shall chant the mantra Aum three times together, followed by the Shanti mantras. Take in a deep breath. Oh, <laughs> 
ಇತ್ಯುಕ್ತ ಓಂ ಸಹನಾ ಸಹನೋ ಭುನಕ್ತ ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂಕರ ವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿ ನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮೇದ್ವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ತತ್ಸತ್ gently press your palms against each other place them on the closed eyes experience the warmth radiating from your palms to your eyes energizing the eyes energizing the brain energizing the whole body and then gently move the palms away open your eyes hari om ತತ್ಸತ್ ನಮೋ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಜೈ ಹೋ ದ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಸತ್ಯಂ ಯೋಗ ಕಾನ್ಕ್ಲೇವ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೆಕ್ ಯೋಗ ಕಾನ್ಕ್ಲೇವ್ ಏಮ್ಸ್ ಆಟ್ ಟಚಿಂಗ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ದ ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡಕ್ಷನ್ ಟು ದ ವಾಸ್ಟ್ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಯೋಗ ಇನ್ ದ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ conclave we looked at what is life what are the stages of life and how can we enrich our lives and we found that yoga can be a very useful and important tool for this purpose in this conclave we will try and understand what yoga is and how we can inculcate the principles of yoga in our lives i have said principles of yoga because you see practices are very important and along with practices it is very important to know the principles both of them are mutually supporting it is something like if you want to go to the sea you need a map and a compass if you do not have a map and a compass you will not be able to go to sea and you will get lost the principles are like the map which guide us but once we get entangled into the principles and if we forget to go to the sea at all then we are certainly not going to go anywhere the practices are the activity of going into the sea so it is essential that we need to have practice and the principles both and this yoga conclave is meant to help us understand these principles of yoga when we say yoga many things come to our mind and yoga is a, like a vast compendium containing multiple aspects in this conclave we will be touching upon three important aspects of yoga we will be touching upon hatha yoga raja yoga and the principles of kundalini and kriya yoga the aim of the theme of this month has been self improvement through awareness what exactly is self improvement let us take an example we 
have a person who wants to play a sport let us take the sport of football and there is a person who is totally ignorant about what football is all about there is another person who has some inkling of information oh football means you need to have a ball you need to kick it you need to do 1 2 3 4 but it's just a very global information then you have a person who gets interested and that person wants to learn more and he actually he or she takes steps to learn the game and play it then you have a person who is playing the game fairly well he is making good progress but still he is not an expert you have a person who is an expert in the game and then you have a person who is a genius an expert is a person who knows all the rules and he uses all the rules and the strategies so that he can take the ball from one end to hit the goal but sometimes there is a genius who apparently breaks many of the strategies but suddenly out of nowhere he gets the results sometimes the strategies are used in a totally different manner that is because that person has got a different insight into the whole game the journey from being a total ignorant person to being a genius is the journey of self improvement and awareness is the first component for this journey and actually if you look at it even our evolution across the species evolution of human life that in itself is a path of evolution and that evolution is a path of self improvement i was not capable yesterday and today i am a little bit more capable and a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more and we keep on improving our abilities that is self improvement and when we speak of self improvement we say self and improvement so who is this self the question who am i of course philosophers and uh, thinkers have gone to a very detailed and abstract level but let us be at the level we are in who am i i identify myself with the body i also identify myself with something i can think about something i can feel so my mind my intellect my emotions this is what i feel i am and i'm sure all of us experience this so for us self improvement means improvement at the physical level at the mental level at the emotional level and maybe the psychic level and this improvement can take place in multiple ways but our seers they found that there is one way by which we can if we follow that one path all other improvements start falling in place swami satyananda used to give an example he used to say that once there was a guru and a disciple and this uh, guru wanted to give 
a hint to the disciple. So the Guru asks the disciple, please go and get me a clay cup. In Hindi, we call it Kulhad. And uh, so he said, okay, Guruji, please give me some money so that I can go to the market and buy it. He said, why do we need any money? Just go and get it. He was like, oh, how do I do it? He went, he asked. And uh, the shopkeeper, sure enough, asked for money. And he said, I don't have anything. The shop, shopkeeper respectfully said that, oh, sorry, we'll not be able to give anything to you without the kulhad does not come free. So he went back. Then the guru said, oh, is it? Okay. Just go into the kitchen and see, is there anything? Uh, the cook was speaking about some things. Can you just go and find out? So he goes to the cook and says, the cook says, well, I am waiting for curds. You know, I need curds for uh, cooking the meal. Today's meal is a special meal and I need curds, which is an important ingredient. What do I do? So the disciple feels, uh, oh my God, today guests are coming and the meal has to be on time. So he quickly comes back to the guru and tells the guru, Gurudev, uh, in the kitchen, there's a bit of a crisis. They need curds. The guru says, oh, is it? Please go and get the curds immediately. That's very important. So now the disciple goes to the shop and asks for curds. Give me half kilo of curds. The disciple has asked for curds. Shopkeeper has given half kilo of curds. But along with the half kilo of curds, he also has given the earthen pot, the clay pot, which the disciple was asking in the beginning. The disciple comes, gives the curds to the uh, kitchen and comes back to the guru. And the guru says, okay, give me my clay pot. But I have not got the clay pot. Guru says, so how did you get the curds? Said, yeah, I got the curds. Oh, it was in a clay pot. So you have got your clay pot. Did you pay anything for the clay pot? He said, no. The Guru said, this is what we must understand. If we ask only for physical benefits, mental benefits, then we will get those. But those are temporary and fluctuating. But if we try and connect to the deeper source which is there within us, the fountain of our existence, then we will have physical benefits, we will have mental benefits, we will have emotional benefits, intellectual benefits, everything what we need can take place. That is the essence. and That is what yoga can do for us. Yoga is that process by which we can improve the abilities within us. Yoga can make us a better I. And that better I, I can apply to my profession, my social life, my personal life, my intellectual life, every aspect of our being starts getting upgraded and that is the reason why yoga is so popular. Yoga apparently gives us benefits of everything. So how does it do that? What are the principles on which this happens? This is what we will be looking at in this live. We will look at the three spokes. There are multiple aspects of yoga. And Swami Niranjananji, the Paramacharya of Vihar School of Yoga, he has beautifully summarized the different aspects of yoga by giving it the example of the wheel of yoga. 
you know, in the wheel, you have the central hub and you have the rim round. The hub is of no use. The use is only of the rim. But if the hub is not there and if you don't have the spokes, the wheel will collapse. In the same way, yoga is that system by which we can upgrade our body, our mind, our emotions. And a time comes when we can even transcend our mind. But that is further away. It improves the quality of the mind. And when the quality of the mind improves, everything starts changing. That is the rim. The hub is abstract. And from abstract to manifest, there are different spokes. The three spokes which we will be covering are Hatha Yoga, Raja Yoga and Ya Yoga. We will also be speaking about Kundalini. Swamiji used to say, Swami Satyananji used to say that within each and every person, there is a very powerful energy which is lying dormant. And if we can trigger that energy in the same way as if we can activate the bullet, the bullet has explosive potential. If you just hold the bullet and try to hit a person with it, maybe it might hit him on the head or something and might cause some injury. But it is nowhere near the true potential of the bullet. But for that, you need to put the bullet into the gun, into the rifle or into the pistol, wherever. And then you need to fire it. The moment it is fired, the potential comes out and the result is seen. This is done by multiple ways and this energy called Kundalini is activated systematically, allowing us to move from that ignorant person to an intermediate person, to a beginner learner, to an intermediate, to an expert, and finally to become a genius in whichever field we want. That is the ultimate aim of yoga. And to achieve this aim, Yoga has got multiple arrows in its armory. Hatha Yoga consists of practices which purify the body, strengthen the body, nourish us and activate this hidden genius within us. Raja Yoga works with the mind and helps us transcend the mind. And Kriya Yoga that is a combination wherein we can work towards improving the quality of ourselves no matter where we are, no matter what drawbacks we have. We can use our weaknesses to transcend the same weaknesses and convert them into strength. That is Kriya Yoga. Kriya is action, dynamism. How to do it? That is what we will be looking at in the next three sessions.